Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters, and welcome to Happy Sabbath on this Sabbath day. And I would like to invite the Spirit in, so if you can pray with me. Heavenly Father, we ask that your Spirit will be with us today and throughout the week that you can guide us and help us, Lord. We know you love us and we're thankful for that, Lord. So as we prepare for our sacrament today, in your spirit be with us. I say these things in Jesus' name, Amen. So welcome brothers and sisters, I have come to the memorial garden where my my father and nan uh, ashes are, are placed. And it's, it's at St Peter, Peter's Church in Bottisford, Lincolnshire, United Kingdom. So. I thought it'd be nice to come out today and hopefully this will all work out nice. Uh, in remembering today, we remember our, our fellow brother, Andrew Alverson, who's having a heavenly birthday today, we think of him. And we, we hear about Father's Day, because it was Father's Day last week. And uh, I guess we have two fathers on earth our Heavenly Father and our Father on Earth. Well, mine has passed and I'm here visiting his, his memorial and I'll put a picture up of that. So this is a lovely memorial place and I think when my mom passes, she'll go into the same plot as my dad and my nan. Uh, it's a lovely little church in Lincolnshire and this area is known a lot for Knights Templars, so we get that. So hopefully, yeah, you've got your emblems ready. And uh, I'm going to say the prayer and, and take sacrament personally on my own. And, and you can do it your way. Uh, just bear with me. So today I'm going to do the combined prayer. Uh, as from Doctor and Covenant 17, uh, Community of Christ Combined Prayer. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. So if you'd like to bow or kneel, whatever preference is best for you. Here we go. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread and wine to the souls of all those who partake of it that they may eat and drink in remembrance of the body and blood of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him and keep his commandments, which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. And behold, I say unto you, that if ye do this, ye shall always rejoice, and be filled with the love of God, and always retain a remission of your sins. And ye shall grow in the knowledge of the glory of him that created you, or in the knowledge of that which is just and true. And ye will not have a mind to injure one another, but to live peaceably, and to render to everyone according 
to that which is their due. Mosiah 2, 22-24 RAV, 4, 12-13 OPV. And just as a quick reminder, RAV is the version of the Book of Mormon that came from us from the RLDS tradition, and the OPV is the Orson Pratt version that came to us from the Brighamite tradition. And behold, I say unto you, that if you do this, well, if you do what? So I want to start the message by looking back at the scriptures, looking back at the book of Mosiah, to see what this is. So basically, in, in, in the Book of Mormon here, the Nephites have all cried out with one voice, saying, Have mercy and apply the atoning blood of Christ, that we may receive forgiveness for our sins. So they realize that they're fallen, they're coming to Christ, they're being born again, and they're becoming new people. So then, King Benjamin says to them, now that you have awoken to your sense of nothingness, if you truly come to a knowledge of the goodness of God and his greatness, I'm paraphrasing here, and the atonement which has been prepared from the foundation of the world, that whereby salvation might come unto all, everyone that's being born again, then you will be diligent in keeping the commandments of God and continuing in the faith, even to the, you know, enduring to the end, basically, is what it's saying here. And so then he says, this is the means by which salvation cometh. And there's no salvation save what's been spoken of, coming through Jesus Christ. Here's what the this is. Believe in God. Believe that he is and he created all things. Believe that he has all wisdom and power, both in the heavens and the earth. He's all powerful. Believe that man doesn't comprehend all things which the Lord comprehends. We are finite beings. God is an infinite being. Believe that you must repent of your sins and forsake them. Humble yourself before God. Ask in sincerity of heart that he will forgive you. But then he goes on to say, as you've come to the knowledge of God, if you remember all the things you just said, be humble. Humble yourself to the depths of humility, calling upon the name of the Lord daily, standing steadfastly in the faith of that which is to come, because Jesus hasn't come yet by the time this is written, which was spoken by the mouth of the angel. The topic here, the message that I felt impressed by the Spirit to talk about here, was living peaceably. So, my question for you then is, and this message is going to be about, how can we live peaceably based on these things that King Benjamin is telling us to do in his address? Well, if we believe in God, then we know that we are not the center of the universe. Our egoism tells us that it's all about, it's all about me, right? But... Once you realize that there's an infinite God and we're a finite beings, then we realize it's not about us. It's about us. It's about the Shema. Which this is one of the reasons why the Shema is so important to me. God is unity. We can't have unity if we think that we are the center of the universe. Believe that God is all wisdom and power. We can't think, oh God, you don't know what you're talking about. I know because I'm here and you're up there. That's not how it works. God sees everything from the beginning to the end. He knows all things. Now, sidebar, I will point out that doesn't mean that we do not have our free agency or freedom of choice. God sees every infinite possibility and knows which path we're going to take, and we choose to take that path. So, now that we understand that God is real, He's all-powerful, and, and I'm going to lean into the seven principles the seven fundamental truths of the fellowship here and say we also have to recognize that God is good. We understand that man can't comprehend all the things that the Lord can comprehend. Then we humble ourselves and it says repent. I want to use the word teshiva. I like that word. Because when we think about repentance in the Western world, where I live, where I grew up, it's this whole idea that we're sinful, awful beings that will never be good enough. And we've got to just repent and beg for forgiveness. But teshiva, when you read it in the Hebrew, it's more like, you're supposed to be going this way, and you're kind of over here a little bit. And that is grace moving in to assist us as we grow in Jesus Christ. I like the peaceful idea of Teshiva over the violent idea of repentance. We're all sinners. We're all damned to hell. But we all take that opportunity to ask God to forgive us so that we can get back on the path, so we can be Israel, Israel, the straight path to God, Yasharel. And as we're doing this, we do it, as I've talked before, by building a relationship because we have tasted his goodness, as King Benjamin says. So this goes back again to 
the seven fundamental truths. We understand that God is good because we've tasted of the love of God. So how do we live peaceably? I would submit to you that we live peaceably by living humbly. By recognizing, again, that we're not the center of the universe. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's about all of us. I, I can't speak for cultures all over the world, but in the United States, there's this constant battle. We're so busy looking for excuses to fight. And I'm going to tell you point blank. The media, they're not there to enlighten us. They're not there to educate us. They're there to sell commercial time. They're there to keep us glued to the screen. And the way that they do it is by getting us angry with each other. And I am going to get a little bit political here and say that it's not something that just the people on the right or just the people on the left do. It's something that they both do because they're trying to sell time slots. When you have 24-hour news cycles, there really isn't that much news. So they fill it up with just rhetoric, violent rhetoric. Rhetoric that's there to give you an artificial stimulation of anger. We've got to ignore this. We've got to seek the truth. We've got to seek common ground. Now, I, I share that with you to share this. We do the exact same thing as Christians. We do the exact same thing as Christians. When I say the church, I mean every single Christian on the planet. But there's other people that when they say the church, it means their, their organization. The incorporated business that they belong to. And I don't say that to insult their churches. I'm just pointing out that there's a different language in what they mean. And the, the fellowship is also incorporated. But when I say the church, I don't mean the incorporated Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship. I mean you. I mean me. I mean the people. Because a church is irrelevant without people. And I'm not going to get into the argument of which one's right. I want to point out the fact that as Christians, we believe many things in common and speak a different language. So if we want to live peaceably, let's find the things that we have in common. Let's find that common ground. And I guarantee you, that common ground is right here, what, what King Benjamin said. Every Christian, whether they believe in the Book of Mormon or Joseph Smith or not, they believe in God. They believe that God is all-powerful and has all wisdom and knowledge. They believe that man doesn't understand and comprehend all things like the Lord can comprehend all things. And I don't know any Christian that doesn't believe that you have to repent of your sins and forsake them and humble yourself before God, asking in sincerity of heart that God will forgive you. That is the common ground that we can all get behind. Satan does a great job reminding us of how we can't get along. My message for you today is to encourage you to live peaceably by rejecting the adversary and finding the things that we have in common, our common ground, and seeing what more we can do together in the name of Jesus Christ. I see people of other religions, including atheism, mocking us because of our infighting. I, there are people who see the goodness of Christ. They read the Bible and they say, wow, I believe this, but I can't become a Christian. I don't, I don't have a dog in this fight between all these different Christian churches. I don't really want to take the time to go find one and then fight with everybody else. That's not what I'm reading here in this Bible. I've talked to people Back when I was a, a missionary for the Brigham my church, a stake or ward missionary, I was never a full-time missionary, and I would talk to them and they'd say, you know, I'm reading this book of Mormon. I love King Benjamin's address. I love Third Nephi. I love these words of Moroni here in Ether and in the book of Moroni, but I don't have a dog in your fight. People see through us when we forsake the peaceable kingdom. And embrace the corporate creed and dogma. So again, my message for you today is, what more can we do in the name of Jesus Christ? How can we live peaceably by finding the things that we have in common with one another? Loving one another. How can we move forward in Christ as Latter-day Saints regardless of what branch of the kingdom we belong to? Or even if we don't belong to any branch at all. I want to bear you my testimony that I know this church is true. And when I say this church, I mean you. I know that you are true to God. I know that you are true 
to the teachings of Jesus Christ. I want to bear you my testimony that I know that the Book of Mormon is true. It truly is a testimony of Jesus Christ. Just like the Bible is a testimony of Jesus Christ. I want to bear you my testimony that Joseph Smith was a prophet. Was he perfect? No. Let's, start, let's stop arguing about what he may have said or may have done. And let's look at what we know for a fact he did. He organized the beginnings of this movement in the name of Jesus Christ through prophecy and revelation. He translated the Book of Mormon, giving us more scripture to help us unite in Christ as a people, not as a corporate entity. I want to bear you my testimony of this work. The Church of Jesus Christ in Christian Fellowship is true. We are true to these ideas of unifying in Jesus Christ, of bringing souls to Jesus Christ, to fellowshipping in Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know what true means to you, but that's what true means to me. It means true in our beliefs and in our actions of what we're trying to do to the best of our finite ability to be a people of God. That's my testimony. That's my message. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, so I'm going to have a nice little walk and um, I'll send some photos of, I'll send some photos of the church. And, uh, going to go for a bit of a nature walk along the back and appreciate God's creation. Uh, can hear all the birds and uh, I enjoy that. So we, as we come to an end, I like to end a prayer for our service and uh, David will put a message up. Uh, it could be from him or anybody that wants to share. Uh, if you need to get in contact with our church, the Church of Jesus Christ in Christian Fellowship or the Fellowship of Christ as it's easily known, the link will become up above or below. And uh, I pray that you have a good week and, and remember that we have a Father in God. I say these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.